I'm Zander, but my artist name is Mock Island. I work and live in North Fremantle, but I'm originally from Amsterdam. My work is a mix between realism and abstraction. So I look at a realistic image of an animal or a plant, for example, and I try to translate it into my own visual language. For me, the Great Barrier Reef has been a very interesting place ever since I was a child. I just want to see which animals really stand out to me and inspire me to paint them. Lately, it's been a lot on the news. Global warming, the coral reef bleaching. It would be really interesting to see it for myself. Welcome to Heron Island Research Station. Nice to meet you. So what actually prompted you to come over to Heron Island? Since a child, I've always been really interested in the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, wherever I travel, I like to just paint something. I normally paint something that is iconic to the area. I mean, there are so many different options for you here. There are so many different animals out in the ocean. Yeah, definitely. I can't wait to get in the water and have a look around. So we get six types of marine turtles that we'll see in this area. I yeah. didn't realise there were so many species. Yeah, the turtles can travel up to 3,000 kilometres to actually come to the island. And we have anywhere from 20 to 1,500 females nesting in the area. Unfortunately, a lot of those species are, you know, threatened, vulnerable, endangered. Yeah. I do a lot of underwater photography. 1996, I started doing graffiti and did that for a while. And yeah, the way I feel when I used to do a nice graffiti piece somewhere in a difficult spot. I get the same feeling when I now take a photo that I like of a special animal that's hard to find. It's, it's quite funny, actually. Underwater photography really filled a gap that graffiti used to fill. My parents used to read me a book about the oceans. They think that might have sparked the interest. I'm not sure, I just have a weird obsession with the underwater world. I cannot walk past water without staring into it, whatever it is, if it's canals in Amsterdam or just a jetty anywhere. Something in my brain is very attracted to whatever is underneath. It's just very mysterious and interesting to me. I think that's also why I started painting it. It's just thinking about it, photographing it, it's not enough, I have to somehow express my feeling about it. It was very different than anywhere else I've been before underwater. Just straight off the beach, you saw all those big animals in really huge numbers. So it was, yeah, good to see. It gave me a bit of hope, actually. We've been here for six years. So we started measuring both CO2 and temperature. Um, we had the four different treatments in all of them. Um, we just run them over two years, like long term, and see how corals develop. They all look exactly the same when we start. Yeah. We put them all in the same positions. It's very sad, like all corals in the high CO2, high temperature, they're all dying. I've seen some of your work, actually. Nice. Just, yeah, and it's really great. Like, I, I love making awareness of like, how beautiful things actually are, because we have to really, like, give the like, public some awareness, you know, not many people will sit down and, and read a, a paper about like what's going to happen and climate change. You do one picture, like they say, yeah. a picture can tell a thousand words. Yeah, so. yeah it's really it's something thing. negative that a lot of people don't want to think about. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, just the impacts will be so huge. What Gio told me was if we continue to do as we are doing now, just not looking good, at least for the, the Great Barrier Reef, there's still hope. Maybe people will change in the next 10 years, 20 years. For me, there's a lot of parallels between photography and painting. You have to find a special animal that's hard to find, and then you have to try again and again to get a good shot of it. It's a real challenge, and it's very different than lens photography, and I'm totally crazy about underwater photography. Art and science, for me, it goes together. I think quite scientifically about my art, I guess. I like to design everything until the very last detail on the computer just to make sure I get all the colors right and all the composition. I want a balance between abstraction and minimalism that still gives the feeling of the animal. You can see it as just a bunch of shapes together and some patterns here and some stripes here. At the same time, you can also really feel the, the soul of whatever I'm painting. Whatever feels good, I paint. I really paint with my heart, I think.
because of where the wall was in the middle of the island in one of the busy streets. I could really imagine a little hermit crab just scurrying away there. Um, and also because it wasn't a very big wall, I like to paint something small and cute, something that's easy to be overlooked. Yeah, some animals have a really clear pattern and it's very easy to portray it. And other animals, for me, it's really a challenge and very exciting to find a way to turn it into a pattern, to just translate it into some mathematical way that it still exactly portrays what the animal looks like. But it now has some kind of law, it's some kind of language and it, it makes sense and it's not random anymore. I had some good, good reactions, people were coming by, they really liked it especially the, the girl who uh, did a lot of research on crabs. Everybody was very happy about it and I was happy to be able to give something back. Adam, the crab expert, is very happy that it ended up being a crab. There was a lot of debate. For me, normally when I see a turtle, it's a very rare experience. At Heron Island, you could go snorkeling and see eight or 10 or maybe even more. The egg laying, that seemed to be something that you would never witness and you just see on nature documentaries, but every single night we went onto the beach, we saw it happen. Yeah, it was very special. I, I actually couldn't believe it. It was good to see that people are doing a lot of research. It makes me very sad to think of the Great Barrier Reef being destroyed. And I think we really have the responsibility to make sure all the plants and animals have the right to live as well. So there's not a lot of big walls on Heron Island. So we found a bigger wall in Yapun, which was a aquarium. And it's now been abandoned for a while. Yeah, the marine park looked kind of sad to me. <laughs> it seemed to be like a 70s thing. I really used to like aquariums when I was a kid. And later on, I started to have second thoughts on it. Aquariums is a funny thing. On one hand, it's a good thing because people can appreciate the beauty of animals and interact with them. And maybe that will be an incentive to think about conservationism. And on the other hand, it's, it's sad, of course, when you catch an animal that has to live in a tank for the rest of its life. For me, it's pretty boring to paint a perfectly white wall. I often like to collaborate with a wall. I like walls that have a bit of texture, that are a bit weathered. It's a big contrast, because my work is quite neat and straight. Painting a lot of walls, I just found little tricks for everything. Now I've got quite a compact little travel kit, which has everything I need. Basically what I use is a level and a piece of string. I like to find lids of paint and, and use them or whatever circles I can find. And if I cannot find the right size, I'll just use a piece of string for, for the circles. And that's really all I need. When I paint in a big city, people might just walk by and get reminded of the beauty of nature, which is easy to forget when you live in a city. You've got screens all around you every day. I hope my art makes a difference, but I don't know. I paint these things because I think it's important. If somebody walks by and is inspired by it and thinks, yeah, turtles are really special and I want to make sure they are protected, that would be awesome. I don't know if that would ever happen, but I guess doing something is better than nothing.